from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. Hello there, good evening and welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Niket Karuna Rafner. And I'm Kassini Balachandra Adhikari. Here are your top stories for tonight. Payment of funds for the applicants in the second round of the Aswasuma scheduled in July. Police launched a water cannon and tear gas attack on an SJB protest march. Concessionary credit scheme to purchase paddy in the Maha season. Four parachuters in an unexpected accident in Golface Green. A heroic mother with 19 children and 234 great grandchildren bids farewell to life. A further 10-year prison sentence for Imran Khan. On to those and other stories in detail now. Payment of allowances for applicants of the second round of the Aswasma program will commence in July this year. Cabinet spokesman Minister Dr. Bambala Gunawardana says that the Cabinet approval Paper in this regard was presented yesterday. <laughs> cabinet spokesman Minister Dr. Bhantalagunwadana said that a cabinet paper has been submitted for the convening of applications for the second round of the Aswasama program in the first quarter of 2024. He further says that selections of applicants is to be concluded in June and to commence payments from July onwards. He added that the cabinet paper has presented proposals to revise the number of total families eligible to receive benefits to 2.4 million. Appeals have been presented for the receiving of benefits. This has enabled to provide welfare payments amounting to 5,000, 7,500 and 15,000 rupees to more families. An inquiry was made by the media person regarding the online act Minister Dr. Bhantha Gunavardhana said that the legislature says that laws could not be drafted. He further points out that even the Attorney General is unable to pass the necessary laws. He said that the relevant parties should act with more responsibility and cooperate with the Attorney General to revise the laws. He further said that it has never been recorded in the history of Sri Lanka of either reconsideration or handing back again to the judiciary of any legislation passed in Parliament. The minister added that some international institutions have agreed to present amendments. However, the Attorney General has instructed not to accede to these requests at that time. He also said that these revisions will be presented later. Minister Dr. Bandhu Gunavadana also said that legislations have been enacted through consensus and according to AG's advice. He also said these amendments would enable all people to live without fear in a free environment. The Samagijana Balavegia has organized a protest march today. However, the police has taken steps to halt the march which commenced near the Vihar Mahadevi at a location close to the park. Tear gas and water cannon attacks were launched against the agitators. The Samagijana Balavegia has earlier getting ready to stop the procession from near the Muslim cemetery in Maligavatta. However, the Colombo Magistrates Court has issued an injunction order banning the protest march. The order has been delivered according to a request submitted to the judiciary by the officer in charge of the Maligavatta police station. Despite the ban, the organizers have made arrangements to commence the march from near the Vihara Mahadevi Park around 3 p.m. today. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and other people's representatives of the SJB have participated in the protest march against the government. The opposition leader has left the scene in his motor vehicle upon the launching of the tear gas and water cannon attacks.
Due to the police action of halting the march at the place of commencement itself, the SJB leaders have conducted a public rally near the Vihar Mahadevi Park. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa was seen returning to the venue. Minister Dr. Bandula Gunwadana says that the VAT was increased in order to extend relief for the people and in the interest of the government workers. So the agitators should realize this fact. Minister Dr. Bandhu Gunavadana said that the people in the country must realize the fact that the tax revenue is not adequate even to pay the salaries and pensions of government servants and to extend some of the relief or even to pay the interest of loans. The minister further said that the income is totally insufficient to maintain the daily financial needs. He also said that it is not an issue for engaging in agitated agitations to fulfill political ambitions due to their ignorance. The minister added that only 3 trillion rupees have been received by the Treasury upon completion of the auditing by the Auditor General in 2023, but the expenditure amounted to 13 trillion rupees. When it was unable to receive credit from abroad, attention had been focused on local means. Another seminar in the series of seminars of the budget of 2024 was held at the Provincial Council Auditorium in Ratnapura yesterday. State Minister of Finance Dr. Ranjit Simala Pitya and Governor of the Sabargamo Province Naveen Disanayaka have presided over the event. The seminars are organized by the Presidential Trade Unions Relations Division with the objective of enlightening the trade union leaders, civil organization activists and business community. Senior Presidential Advisor on Economic Affairs Dr. RSH Samarathunga, Director of the Economic Stabilization Unit, have also delivered lectures. The state and private banks have planned to implement a credit scheme named Madhapana under a concessionary interest rate for the purchase of paddy in the current Maha season. Under the program, a maximum loan of 50 million rupees are to be provided to small and medium scale paddy mill owners. A maximum loan of 25 million rupees are also expected to be handed over to paddy storage owners and collectors of paddy stocks. The repayment period is 180 days. The Treasury will bear 4% out of the 15% of annual interest rate. The relevant proposal has been submitted to the Cabinet by the President. Approval of the Cabinet of Ministers has been received for the project to implement a wind power farm in the Mana Islands. The proposal in this regard was presented by Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekara. Cabinet approval has been granted for the setting up of a wind power centre in the Mana Islands in 2020. However, it has not become possible to utilise the Asian Development Bank funds under the implementation of the foreign debt restructuring programme of the government. The private sector investors are scheduled to engage in the project in an operation period of 20 years. Attention has been focused on a short-term foreign exchange earning program through exportation of metal. The Cabinet of Ministers has decided to appoint a committee for the obtaining of a report with recommendations after studying on the feasibility of exporting up to 1 million tons of metal. Cabinet approval has also been granted for the supply of essential vehicles only for several government and non-governmental institutes. The President in his capacity as the Minister of Finance, Economic Stabilization and National Policy has presented the proposal to be presented to parliamentary approval for the Import and Export Control Regulation No. 1 of 2024. Chamari Pereira, wife of the late State Minister Sanat Nishantha, has visited last night the residence of Security Officer Anuradha Jaikuri, who was killed in a motor accident along with the late State Minister. She has arrived at the residence in Marwanagoda in Handenia, Kandy, with her children and extended her condolences to the wife of the sergeant and family members.
The Connect Sri Lanka program of the Sri Lanka Rupwani Corporation will be telecast over the national television at 9.30 tonight. The program has been jointly organized by the Ceylon Industrial Development Board and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The aim of the program is to connect local producers with the international market. In the upcoming program, attention will be focused on market opportunities in the United Arab Emirates through discussions with the officials of the embassy. Chairman of the Sikon Industrial Development Board, Sarang Alha Peruma, and Chairman of Local Business Establishments will take part in the 10th Connect Sri Lanka program tonight. Connect Sri Lanka. An air ambulance service between Maldives and Sri Lanka will be commenced from the 1st of March. This was agreed at a special discussion which took place between Minister Nimal Siripala da Silva and Minister of Transport and Aviation Services of the Maldives, Captain Mohammed Amin, in Colombo today. The proposed service would enable Maldivian citizens to promptly arrive in Sri Lanka for urgent medical treatment in cases of accidents, illnesses and other health emergencies. After extensive discussions between the two countries, it was agreed to launch an air ambulance service between Mali and Bandanaik International Airport. The first phase of the program will be launched on the 1st of March this year. The minister has granted all necessary approvals to airport officials and civil aviation authority to facilitate this project. President Secretary Saman Nekanayaka highlighted the formation of a cadre of talented individuals poised to offer effective political leadership to the nation in the future through student parliaments. He shared his insight while addressing the student parliamentarians of the Maliadeva College, Kurunaivala. The inaugural session of the student parliament of the Maliadeva College took place today at the main hall of the Presidential Secretariat, formerly the old parliament building. In accordance with directives from President Ranil Vikramasinghe, the Communication Department of the Parliament of Sri Lanka has collaboratively organized this program with the Presidential Secretariat. Distinguished guests at the event included former Minister Akila Viraj Karyavasam, President Secretary Saman Nekanayaka, Secretary General of the Parliament of Sri Lanka Kushani Rohanadira, Deputy Secretary General of the Parliament of Sri Lanka and Chief of Staff Chaminda Kularapna, the President Secretary, extending his greetings to the students of the Student Parliament, also provided them with insights into the historical significance of the Parliament. All arrangements are being made to commemorate the 76th National Independence Day with gallantry at the Golf Face Green on the 4th of next month. A special traffic plan is underway in several roads in Colombo for rehearsals of this ceremony from today till the 3rd of next month. Police says on the days when rehearsals are being conducted in connection with the National Day Ceremony, restriction of vehicle travel or road closures or usage of alternate routes are taking place. Such deployments have been carried out from 6 a.m. to 12 noon today. The special traffic plan will come into foes un until conclusion of the Independence Day Ceremony on the 4th of February. Many contingents, including the three armed forces, the police, the police special task force, the National Cadet Corps, retired gallant soldiers, heroic soldiers with special needs, will march in the National Day Commemoration Parade. The commander of this year's position is Central Asian Commander and leader of the Vijaya Infantry Regiment, Major General Rohita Adwihare. <laughs> So 
Four security forces personnel have met with an unexpected accident when they were engaged in a rehearsal of parachute display of the National Independence Day ceremony. The Sri Lanka Air Force says that the conditions of the injured personnel are not serious. Due to the entanglement of parachutes of two parachuters in the sky, it has become impossible to control the parachutes. Two parachuters fell on the golf face green and two others on a nearby building at a considerable speed. The two injured Air Force parachuters and the two soldiers were admitted for treatment at the Colombo National Hospital. The National Lotteries Board has embarked upon a digital transformation in the lottery sector in the country. The SAP Business Wanhana software will be deployed in a partnership venture with the PBSS Group. The National Lotteries Board, in joint collaboration with the PBSS or Perfect Business Solution Service and the SAP Business Wanhana Network, has inaugurated the transformation yesterday. The aim is to centralize control efficiency and dissemination of information in the overall business program. The ultimate objective is the speedy and higher productivity in both international operations and consumer affairs of the NLB. Chairman of the National Lotteries Board, Dr. Chamira Siya Pabewatana, and officials of other institutions have participated in the event. Now here are some more local news items in brief. Handing over of the mace and the sword to the Sergeant of Arms next in line has taken place in Parliament today. The Sergeant of Arms of more than 42 years, Narendra Fernando, has retired from service. It was presented to the new appointee Kushan Sampad Jairatna. US Ambassador Julie Chung has appreciated the free health service in Sri Lanka. She has expressed her sentiments at a meeting with Minister of Health Ramesh Patirana at the Health Ministry today. Ambassador Chang said on this occasion that the US will provide the necessary financial, technical and physical assistance. The funeral of Re late Rapnaika Kankanam Lage, Karunavati, a mother of 19 children and the grandmother and great-grandmother of 234 siblings has taken place at the Badulla crematorium today. The deceased was fortunate enough to be the recipient of the Jatika Veeramatha Award this year, as well as presented by the Office of the National Elders' Rights. Ms. Karunavati was 97 years old at the time of her demise. Now, storming of wild elephants into villages is a bitter experience for villagers. However, the assembly of a large number of elephants in one location is an extremely enchanting picture of aesthetic value. This is a scene of a bunch of elephants who have arrived at once in search of food. The scene of, on your screen is the government farm in Kadravela of the Tamankadwa Divisional Secretariat Division in the Polonarwa district. In the beautiful sceneries of the roaming of wild elephants, around 150 beasts could be witnessed at once. The farm workers say that the wild elephants in the National Flood Valley Park are constantly visiting the farm looking for food. Foreign news on the other side of this break. Prima Kutumi, Pantamai. And in foreign news tonight, former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has been sentenced to 10 years in jail in a case in which he was charged with leaking state secrets. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan, who was ousted by his opponents as Prime Minister in 2022, is already serving a three-year jail term after being convicted of corruption. He has called all the charges against him politically motivated. The conviction under the Secrets Act 
that comes this week before general elections in which he is barred from standing. Meanwhile, former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi, Vice Chairman of Imran Khan's PTI party, was also sentenced to 10 years in prison by the Special Court. Israeli commandos disguised as medical staff and civilians gunned down three men in Jenin's Ibn Sina hospital in the occupied West Bank, alleging they planned to carry out terrorist attacks. Israeli forces have shot dead three Palestinians inside a hospital in the city of Jenin in the occupied West Bank. The killings were carried out by undercover operatives while the men were sleeping at the Ibn Sina hospital. Hamas says the Israeli army's crimes will not go unanswered um, after it assassinated three young Palestinian men at the Ibn Sina hospital in Jenin City in the occupied West Bank. It said the killings are a continuation of the occupation's ongoing crimes against other people from Gaza to Jenin and pointed out that one of the men was injured and in bed when he was killed. Of the three men, Hamas confirmed one was its member and another was with the Jenin battalion. The third was also a Palestinian fighter. It said that Palestinian fighters will not be intimidated by assassinations or weakened by the crimes of the cowardly enemy. Now, North Korea has carried out a third test of its cruise missiles in less than a week, firing the weapons into the waters off its west coast. The Joint Chiefs of Staff said in a statement that South Korea has military detected several unknown cruise missiles launched into the West Sea of North Korea. It further added that the South Korean and U.S. intelligence agencies were analyzing the data. North Korea is not banned from testing cruise missiles under long-standing United Nations sanctions imposed over its nuclear program and has already carried out two tests over the past week. Yesterday, the North Korean state media said leader Kim Jong-un had guided the launch of submarine launch strategic cruise missiles known as the Pulvasal 331 over the weekend, a few days after South Korea detected several cruise missiles being launched from the country's west coast. The missile is believed to be nuclear capable. The missiles launched on Sunday flew for 7,400. <laughs> Taking a look at your sports news tonight, the Afghanistan team scheduled to participate in a test match with Sri Lanka is expected to arrive in the island tonight. The match will be played at the SSE grounds in Colombo. Admission to the venue of the match to be commenced on the second is free of charge to the spectators. The 16-member squad of the Afghanistan Reserve is captained by Hashmatullah Shahidi. Sri Lanka has never engaged in a text fixture with Afghanistan. Sharjah Warriors team beat Dubai Capitals team in an international league T20 cricket tournament match played in Dubai. Dubai Capitals batting first were all out for 104 rounds at the end of 18 overs and two deliveries. Mahish Dikshana in an excellent bowling spell of four overs has captured four wickets for 20 runs. The Sharjah Warriors in reply has scored 105 runs with only one wicket falling at the end of 13 overs to secure victory. Man of the match was Mahish Dikshana. Jordan and Qatar have been successful in entering the quarter-finals of the Asian Football Champ by 3-2 at the Khalifa grounds. In another Super 16 round match, Qatar beat Palestine 2-1 at the al grounds. Title hopes are suddenly in tatters. The host nation are back in AFC Asia. There, Simone Daba. Two defenders with him. Daba goes all the way himself. He took the book on and he beats the keeper for good measure. Not much time left in the half. A beats corner. It's met in the middle and it's in for Qatar. Just given this to a thief. And a thief keeps his goal. And that's all the news for tonight. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night.
Good night.